The state of Florida has played a huge part in the history of Division I college football, with the University of Florida, Florida State, and the Miami Hurricanes all dominating the sport at one time or another. In the past few years, however, it hasn't been these three schools dominating the headlines of college sports in Florida, but rather a school located in Orlando known as the University of Central Florida. The Knights have been playing football since 1979, but have only recently broke through as a consistently ranked football school. In just the past two seasons, they have had a total of 25 wins, including a win over Auburn in the 2018 Peach Bowl and only one loss, with that loss coming to LSU in the Fiesta Bowl in 2019. They have been in the conversation for the college football playoff as well, and while there will be a debate on whether or not they deserved a spot in the playoff, the fact that they are even in this position is surreal, as just two seasons ago, they finished with an 0-12 record. So how exactly did UCF get to this point? Today, we will be looking at the rise of UCF football. They were an independent for six seasons until they moved into the Mid-American Conference for the 2002 season. They qualified for the FCS playoffs twice and the Division II playoffs once, but had yet to earn an invite to any bowl game in their time as an FBS school. It wasn't until the hiring of George O'Leary in 2004 that the program truly saw success. Ironically, in O'Leary's first season as head coach of the team, the Knights finished at 0-11. This was their last season in the MAC as they moved on to Conference USA the following year. From the time they joined CUSA to the time that they left, UCF was a completely different team. In their first ever season in the conference, they went 8-5 and 7-1 and and in conference play, which was good enough to qualify for the conference title game, but they ultimately lost to Tulsa. In their first bowl appearance, they were narrowly defeated by Nevada 49-48 in overtime. Despite the fact that UCF ended the 2005 season on a two-game losing streak, it was a huge success for the program. It was their first time ever making a conference title game, and also their first time making an FBS Bowl. After this, UCF went through a pretty successful period from 2006 to 2012. Although they had three losing seasons where they went 4-8 in 2007 and 2008, and 5-7 and in 2011, they also had three seasons where they won 10 or more games. In 2007, they finished 10-4, which featured a conference title win over Tulsa, before they lost in the Liberty Bowl to Mississippi State. In 2010, perhaps their most successful year in this period, they finished at 11-3 with a conference title win over SMU and a Liberty Bowl win over Georgia. For the first time in the program's history, they also finished the season ranked in the AP Top 25, where they were ranked at 21. In 2012, their last season in Conference USA, they finished the season at 10-4, and, and despite losing to Tulsa in overtime of the title game, they won their bowl game over Ball State. After leaving Conference USA, the Knights joined the newly formed American Athletic Conference, which featured many former Big East football schools such as Cincinnati and UConn, and other Conference USA schools as well, such as Houston and Memphis. The jump from Conference USA to the AAC was going to be a tough one, as it was once again a new conference for UCF, and although there were some familiar faces, there were a lot of tougher ones in the AAC as well. But that didn't stop UCF one bit. Led by quarterback Blake Bortles, they won the AAC in their first year and finished the 2013 season with a 12-1 record, including a bowl win over Baylor and a number 10 rank in the AP poll. With Bortles having a phenomenal season, he decided to enter the draft, leaving UCF without their starting quarterback heading into 2014. They were expected to take a step back, but they didn't do that bad. They finished the 2014 season with a 9-4 record, but lost their bowl game to NC State by just 7 points. After this season, UCF officially hit rock bottom, a place in which the program hadn't been in in a long time. UCF finished that 2015 season at 0-12, and, and longtime head coach George O'Leary resigned after 8 games. Ironically, in his first season, he won 0 games, and in his last season, he also won 0 games. UCF had a huge task replacing a guy like O'Leary, who brought the university so much during his coaching tenure. They decided to hire Oregon offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach Scott Frost. Frost had plenty of football experience. He played at Nebraska during the time they won a national championship, played in the NFL, and coached on many different college coaching staffs before landing the job at UCF. He was able to turn the program around very quickly in his short time there. In his first season in 2016, UCF went 6-7, and, and although anything would have been an improvement over the prior season, the Knights made big jumps from one year to the next. But the best was yet to come from the program. In the 2017 season, led by sophomore quarterback Mackenzie Milton, UCF shocked the entire world by going 11-0 in the regular season. They would go on to beat Memphis in a high-scoring 62-55 matchup to put them at 12-0 on the season. There were some people who even argued that UCF should earn a spot in the college football playoff, despite not being a Power 5 school. That's just how good the team was that year. But their success in the regular season didn't go to waste, as the school earned a berth in the Peach Bowl against Auburn, a team who defeated Georgia and Alabama earlier in the year. 
two teams who made the playoff in 2018. They somehow upset the Tigers in the big bowl game and put the college football world on notice. As a result of their 13-0 finish, they finished with the number one ranking by one major poll. And despite Alabama winning the playoff and being ranked number one by a majority of the college football polls, they claimed their first ever national championship. Regardless of whether or not you believe that UCF deserved a spot, as a national champion, or even in the college football playoff, their 2017 season was nothing short of amazing. Just two seasons prior, they couldn't even win a single game, and now they were on top of the college sports world. This past 2018 was almost as successful as the last, as the Knights finished at 12-1 before losing to the LSU Tigers in the final game of the season. Over the past two seasons in 2017 and 2018, they have been by far the best group of five school in the country and has earned the respect of a lot of people. Over this time frame, they have a record of 25-1, and one, and with that one loss coming by just 8 points to a very good LSU team, it shouldn't put any blemish on what they've been able to accomplish. Unfortunately, they lost Scott Frost after the 2017 season to Nebraska, but new head coach Joss Heupel seemed to do just fine in his first season. However, Mackenzie Milton broke his leg in 2018, and not too long ago, his replacement Dorio Mack was ruled out for the season with a leg injury as well. Replacing both of them will be former Notre Dame quarterback Brandon Wimbush. It will not only be interesting to see just how good this team can be next year, but also if Heupel and Wimbush can continue the productivity that the Knights are starting to become accustomed to. Now, there were many things that actually played into UCF's rise as a program. One of the biggest reasons why UCF was able to turn around was due to head coach Scott Frost. In the season that UCF went 0-12, they had the worst ranked offense in the entire nation in terms of scoring. In that same season, UCF lost its last five games by an average of 37.4 points. In just two seasons, UCF became a top five offense in terms of scoring, and despite allowing scores of 55 and 42, they were still able to win games. Scott Frost and his coaching staff also changed the schemes around the program to better suit the team. They switched from a 4-3 to a 3-4 defense and focused more on the spread option at offense and transitioned away from the pro-style offense that was previously run at the school under O'Leary. The change to the offensive scheme allowed for a better tempo that suited a team built fast and ready to go. To also suit the team, players were moved around to positions in which they could better succeed at. One of the biggest switches came with Shaquem Griffin, who moved from safety to outside linebacker. As a result, he became the American Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Year. Frost also brought in a much more relaxed approach, which helped the players out. O'Leary had a strict list on things as simple as facial hair and uniform accessories, but with Frost, things felt like a breath of fresh air. YouTuber D. Stroing, who played on the UCF football team that went 0-12, made a video about that season and said that a lot of the plane rides home were just sat in silence and that O'Leary spent a lot of the time yelling at the players. He even stated that O'Leary was the meanest coach in college football at the time. If you guys haven't watched the video yet, I will link it in the description down below so you guys can see the entire video and the perspective of one of the UCF players for that season. Meanwhile, Shaquem Griffin recalls spending summer afternoons in Frost's office watching Spongebob and former tight end Jordan Aiken said Frost took the night's bowling in the middle of preseason camp. Griffin was quoted with saying, me being here in the beginning, we had to take it on ourselves to, hey, let's do a team event. Let's go here. Now it's like, okay, the coaches and the players, we're going bowling. We're going to enjoy ourselves. We're going to eat pizza. We're going to eat brownies. You've got a culture like that. You can't beat that. Of course, these are just examples, and it's more likely than not that Scott Frost had to discipline his players from time to time, but the point is that he took a different approach towards creating a new culture, one that probably suits modern football better than O'Leary's, and that is a huge reason why the players bought into his system and succeeded. We can always look at the X's and O's, but oftentimes it's a simple culture fix that changes the program. Scott Frost not only cared about the product on the field, but he also cared about the lives of each of his football players. He was quoted with saying that I hired a bunch of guys that aren't just in this to make money and win football games. I hired a bunch of assistants that care about young men. Every single position on our football team has improved and I give the credit to our staff for forging those relationships and pouring into young men's lives and making everybody better individuals. And that made us a better team. The play of Mackenzie Milton has helped the team out a ton as well. He has been without a doubt the most recognizable face on these UCF teams and for good reason too. As a 5'11", three-star recruit from the state of Hawaii, Milton wasn't expected to do much at the college football level. In the past two seasons, he has quickly turned the heads of almost everyone around the nation. He has thrown for a combined 62 touchdowns to just 15 interceptions and has added plenty of work in the ground game as well. His first season as a freshman in 2016 was rocky, but he was able to grow with Coach Frost and the system in place and it helped him out a lot to succeed now. 
Unfortunately, he suffered a gruesome leg injury that will keep him out in the 2019 season, but UCF has plenty weapons around. New quarterback Brandon Wimbush should be able to fit into the offense nicely, and he has more than enough talent to continue the offensive production this team has seen in the past two years. Of course, we know that Frost is gone, but he's been replaced by a coach who has been able to keep the offense rolling. Josh Heupel, who is a disciple of the air raid offense. He even had his own turnaround as Missouri's offensive coordinator, taking the Tigers from 127th to 14th in scoring offense in two years. So the task of replacing UCF Scott Frost was not a daunting one for him. This UCF team is primed to have a breakout season this upcoming year. And if Milton can come back fully healthy for 2020, they will be in a great position. What UCF has been able to do after going 0-12 just a few years ago is nothing short of amazing. They seriously went from worst to first and turned the program around for the better. We haven't seen a quote-unquote small school do anything remotely close to this since Boise State, and UCF has done a great job of reminding everyone that the non-Power 5 schools are just as good as everyone. But as always, only time will tell just how good this UCF team can be, and maybe, just maybe, they can make the college football playoff. This has been the rise of UCF football. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and as always, I will see you guys next time.